Welcome back. You're still tuned into Halftime Report on CNBC TV 18, where shareholder activism in India is on the rise. In FY23, according to a report, institutional shareholders, they have dissented some of the resolutions and it has risen by 44%. And it is largely for ESOP-related resolutions and other factors as well. Is this a trend which will be continuing? What is the trend looking like? Let's get in Hetal Dalal, President and CEO at Institutional Investor Advisory Services and Pranav Haldia, MD at Prime Database, joining us now to talk more on that the surge in the cases that we are seeing, seeing here. Hetal, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, you know, recently GHCL shareholders, they uh, did not allow reappointment of Sanjay Dalmia as the director. We saw uh, shareholders questioning salary of the MD and CEO of Havels as well. So this has been something that is on the rise. Uh, can you give us some data here? What has the shareholder activism or dissent looked like in last couple of quarters? Is the trend still positive? I think if you just look at the uh, the landscape of what's really happening, right? A couple of things are happening. One is that there is a regulatory change that now empowers investors to act more. Um, the second is stewardship responsibilities imposed on asset managers to therefore engage significantly more with companies and vote on shareholder resolutions. And the third is of course the advent of proxy advisors. Um, all of these three elements really bring together a a significantly higher degree of focus on some of the on the resolutions that companies are presenting, and yes, it's also therefore made uh, institutional institutional investors act more uh, uh, act, act in a much more active uh, or vote in a much more active manner on some of these resolutions. The trend line, if you see over the years, and even if you see over the quarters, and the quarter can change because of the number of resolutions get presented. But over the years, if you see the trend line is very very clear that um, institutional investors have been far more vocal uh, in their dissent on shareholder resolutions and some of the issues which companies are bringing up than they were before. It's no longer passive, it's far more active and it's getting much, much more vocal. Even when you look at that split, right? Earlier it used to be the FIs which tended to vote mm -hmm. far more against, but now you have domestic investors also which are now uh, taking a much harder stand. So by and large, we see this likely to become, um, we're likely to see this trend sort of uh, continue. Okay, well, it's definitely good for corporate governance then, Hetal. Uh, welcome to the show. This is Ekta. Uh, you know, while we've discussed a couple of the key issues with regards to directors coming on board, one of the issues that I want to bring up with you is ESOPs. Because that seems to be a bit of a, you know, touchy point with regards to what price they are issued at and what price the shareholders think it should be issued at. So what is your sense in terms of the ESOP issue? And do you think that that could probably uh, see some kind of resolution going forward? So I think on ESOP, there's a fundamental difference in the philosophy, right? When companies look at stock options, they look at it as deferred compensation, retention plan, and therefore uh, stock options are priced in a certain manner. When investors look at stock options, they're looking at alignment of interest. Uh, are, the, are the employees' interests aligned to the shareholders' interest in terms of creating wealth? Uh, so where you have stock options which are issued at a significant discount and they have time-based vesting, that's when you see a significant pushback from institutional investors. What investors want to see is either stock options are issued at market price, in which case there's significant alignment with their interest, or if they issued a deep discount, there is a certain uh, performance requirement for these top options to best. Um, it's it's basically this gap between you know how companies look at stock options, how investors are looking at stock options, which is creating this uh, dissonance, and therefore you're seeing a certain degree of pushback. Now, mm -hmm. if you look at the way ESOPs have moved, right? Earlier it used to be financial services which tended to have stock options. Uh, most of these were at market price. It slowly moved over the last uh, five years, it's moved manufacturing companies also, or the traditional brick and mortar companies uh, using stock options. And now, you, of course, you have the startups which have got it listed, which, uh, which have gotten listed, where founders are getting a significantly high proportion of stock options at a, at a significant discount to market price. Um, so this is actually causing a, uh, an amount of angst as far as the institutional investors are concerned, and that is why you're seeing this entire buildup on stock options. Okay, so ESOP continues to be uh 
topic of contention between shareholders and the board. Pranav Haldia is also joining us, who is the MD of Prime Database. Pranav, I was going through your report where you suggested how this dissent by institutional investors, it has risen in FY23 by 44%, at least the cases here. But still, 97% of those resolutions got passed because of higher promoter holding. So while activism is rising, it still is getting a pushback because of higher promoter holding. Uh, what is the data suggesting here? And do you think there is a way out here or this could be something which is causing a challenge for rising activism here? Well, so, you know, if you look at uh, traditionally uh, in India, most of the companies are promoter controlled. Uh, so automatically, that means that most resolutions, especially ordinary resolutions, uh, will go in the direction of how the promoters uh, vote. But that is something which is uh, um, uh, changing. Uh, you are seeing a consistent rise in institutional holding, right? If I look at the last 10 to 12 years, uh, you've seen institutional holding go, go up from about 27% to 37% in India. Uh, so uh, more and more institutional uh, investors are coming in to companies and which is why you know the metric uh, to consider is you know how many of such institutional investors are actually voting uh, you know against some of these resolutions and like our report shows that you know this number has gone up 3x in the last two years which is a significant increase in fact even if you look at the nifty 50 companies there's been an increase of 35 percent so while a lot of these resolutions will soon get passed uh, it is important to know that there is dissent coming in from institutional investors Okay. All right. So that point is taken, Pranav. But the larger trend, uh, the fact that, yes, promoter holding allows the resolutions to be passed. But going forward, do you think that there will probably just be a higher amount of corporate government governance, a think through of resolutions which might face that pushback from shareholders? And hence, there might just it might just be a change from the company perspective before they even propose the resolutions, just better corporate governance. Absolutely, absolutely. In fact, you know, one of the uh, developments which is uh, taking place recently is that, you know, SEBI has mandated that all mutual funds need to uh, compulsory vote on all uh, uh, resolutions. And uh, you've seen actually that the abstinence uh, figure for mutual funds has gone from 21% to nil uh, in the last one year. So, um, you know, that's the step in the right direction. And uh, if more and more uh, institutional investors are mandated uh, to vote on resolutions, you will see, you know, uh, more pushback uh, um, towards the companies. In fact, you know, Hethel is here as well. And I think pro proxy firms need to be complemented in a big way uh, for this change uh, which is taking place. Because now you find that there's a lot of uh, engagement even before some resolutions are passed. Um, you know, with the broader community uh, to see if, you know, that passes muster. So I think, uh, you know, these are encouraging signs and I expect uh, this trend to, uh, uh, you know, go in this direction going forward as well. Okay, point taken. Hetan, when we talk about some of the bigger issues of contention, of course, as Ekta mentioned, ESOP is one of them. Um, what is your take here? What are the other uh, segments or other issues or resolutions where you've seen a bigger contention or dissent coming in? So, uh, executive remuneration is a is an area of uh, significant concern outside just the ESOP resolution, right? Uh, what we are seeing now is that if you look at 2022, for example, and look at the resolution that IAS has covered, there were um, 201 resolutions which related to promoter compensation. Compensation for promoters who are in executive roles or in non-executive roles, right? And 68 of them actually saw pushback. That's 34%. That's significantly higher than what you see typically in related party transactions as well. Um, and therefore, and again, one of the issues is just the level of compensation, the structure of compensation, and what actually, and the, and the difference in the compensation of promoter CEO visa the rest of the staff. Um, so some of these issues, compensation is the second highest, is, is clearly a bone of contention that we are seeing now. And third, I think just for the fact that the number of resolution and director reappointments has increased or appointments has increased, we are seeing a significant pushback as far as director appointments are also concerned, more so also for independent directors, where there are concerns over uh, conflict of interest, past, past performance of independent directors, or just uh, board attendance and sort of contribution to the board. So there are several, some of these issues which also investors are raising. Okay, Pranav, quickly then, just wanted your thoughts on the related party transaction. Uh, how much of it is an how much of 
it has been, uh, you know, how much of activism have we seen against RPTs? And how much of it do we see in the broader markets versus, say, the Nifty space or frontline stocks? Well, you know, I mean, there's been a significant rise in related party transactions as well as our uh, report has shown. Uh, and uh, may I add that this is despite uh, more stringent uh, regulations which have come in around related party transactions. Of course, you know, uh, um, this is not something which is uh, particularly looked at uh, favorably by a lot of investors. In fact, uh, you know, as the data shows, um, you know, in, more, in nearly 15% of such resolutions, there has been pushback from uh, institutional investors. But I think with, uh, you know, um, greater transparency, firstly, which is uh, now come in with regards to some of the related party transactions uh, being disclosed by uh, companies, you will, uh, you know, again, see uh, companies becoming more circumspect uh, as far as uh, these resolutions are concerned. Okay, all right, Pranav and Heather, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for joining us with your insights. So that's all about shareholder activism in the country and it's increasing by the day is what their reports suggest as well. Time for a break now. Sachitana Nutekar of Trade Bulls will join in with some trading strategies on the other side. Stay tuned for that.